Hello everybody, my name is The Golden Inn, and today we're gonna talk about why I love the Book of Boba Fett even though I don't. You're probably thinking to yourself, Goldman, that title makes no damn sense, what are you talking about? Well, that's the point of this video. If you've watched my recent video on Chapter 4, or you listened to my podcast, The Chatoween Show, you would know I've been very critical of the Book of Boba Fett. My biggest complaint about this series was that the transformation of the Boba Fett we once knew to the Boba Fett in this series wasn't earned. Yes, they had all these flashbacks, but they hadn't convinced me enough that he would change his entire personality. With that being said, what do I love about this show? It's not the little details I find here and there that I find to be fun. I am really glad with the direction they have taken this series so far, from a certain point of view. Am I happy with the story per se? No. But I am ecstatic that this show didn't become what I thought it would be. Ever since the release of The Rise of Skywalker and the universal praise of The Mandalorian season, too, I've been concerned that Lucasfilm would rely too much on nostalgia for their storytelling. The Mandalorian Season 2 was fantastic, but I thought for sure that the message Lucasfilm would get from the show's success was that all these different cameos and connections to what we all love is what made the show popular. I mean, there are crying compilations of Luke Skywalker's return in the finale. I thought for sure that the Book of Boba Fett would be all about the different bounty hunters we saw in The Empire Strikes Back fighting Boba Fett for whatever reason. I thought the the main villain of the show would be Cad Bane, and that every episode would contain a reference to something we've seen before. But that hasn't been the case. Besides Boba Fett and Max Rebo, there aren't any characters in the series that we've seen in other projects before, outside the Mandalorian. Yes, I'm aware that Black Chrysanthemum was in the comics, but he hasn't been in any of the shows or movies before. This show hasn't been reliant on fans saying, oh look, there's Boss, or hey look, there's Cad Bane. This show has been focused on Boba Fett. It has been a character study. My least favorite episode of The Mandalorian was Chapter 5, and it wasn't because Taro Calican was a bad character, it was because the whole episode I felt like I was getting constantly nudged by the storytellers trying to tell me, hey remember this? Hey remember that? We began with the same shot that A New Hope began with. Hey look they're going to the same type of docking bay that the Millennium Falcon was in. Hey look they're in the Moss Eisley Cantina. Hey look Mando is sitting in the exact same seat that Han shot Greedo in. When I express these complaints, People love to call me a party pooper that hates fun. It's not that. To me, when a storyteller puts something into the story solely for nostalgia, it tells me they aren't confident enough in their own story to keep the audience invested. They need to rely on cheap moments that only really work on first viewing. It's like in The Force Awakens when Finn grabbed the training ball for a quick second, or in The Rise of Skywalker when Chewbacca got a medal. To me, I just think, oh, come on. As of four episodes in, this show has has for the most part completely avoided that. And watch this video be completely rendered useless if the last three episodes ruined that. Yeah, we got Max Rebo showing up in the background, but if that's the only instance of silly fan service in this show, I'm completely fine with that. It's not blatant to the point where it's annoying. So overall, I'm pleasantly surprised with Lucasfilm's decisions here. The other aspect of this show I really appreciate, and this may be one of my hottest takes, is the Moss Espa Vespas. Yes, they feel weird in Star Wars, especially on a planet like Tatooine, but it's different. The directors here, especially Robert Rodriguez, are getting their chances to add their own style to the show. Lucasfilm is pretty much giving them free reign to add some weird shit, and I like that. It baffles me that when it comes to the movies, the directors are under such tight control that they almost always get fired, but with the shows, they can experiment in a way the movies can't. Robert Rodriguez has directed some weird stuff in the past, especially one of my favorite movie trilogies ever, the Spy Kids trilogy. Watch those movies and tell me they aren't trippy as hell. I want more directors like this to experiment with Star Wars. Again, do I like the design of the Moss Espa Vespas? No. But I'd rather Star Wars constantly try new ideas than have every story feel the exact same way. When George Lucas first made Star Wars, he was one of these weird directors. You can listen to interviews of people saying how weird his ideas were, or how unique his visions were and he created arguably the most popular film in the history of cinema. Yeah, not everything worked, but when it does work, it works. I touched on this briefly before, but I love how focused this show is on Boba Fett. This show wants to develop Boba Fett so much that almost half the story so far has been flashbacks. Flashbacks that I don't think were particularly all that great, but a lot of people do. This is what I want from Obi-Wan. I am very concerned that show 
will be a nostalgia fest too. Before I end the video, I want to expose some of my own hypocrisy here. If you follow me on Twitter, which you should, you may have noticed that I have been simping very hard for Kira from Solo. Yes, Amelia Clark is absolutely gorgeous, but from a story perspective, I would love it if she were in this show. I still think there's a good possibility she can show up, but I'm almost glad she hasn't. It tells me that Favreau and Filoni are confident in this story, and that's all I want from my Star Wars storytellers. And if there is by any means a reference to the sequel trilogy or a character from the sequel trilogy showing up, I'm going to scream like a little girl. Will I be hypocritical? Absolutely. But hey, I'm a shill, what can you expect? Thank you everyone so much for watching another one of my videos. Do not forget to unite the Claude Squad, and I will see you guys next time.